Hello everyone, and welcome to Not Only the Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have more matches! We have Izzeride versus Golda on Leyline as our first match. It's going to be both players going for Hovercraft, because Hovercraft are apparently very powerful now. And Hovercraft have been buffed quite a bit. The Bolas new Riot unit that we haven't seen a whole lot of on stream yet is a very strong unit. And Dagger's also got a little bit of a buff overall. It's, I mean, I've had a lot of changes. Right now, it's, yeah, 215 range, a slight range buff. The damage got buffed up a little bit. I believe it used to be 90, now it's 100. I mean, for the most part, they're the same. But then we're also talking about Gota here, and Gota's always been strong with daggers. So I'm not entirely surprised to see them go Hovercraft, though on a map like this, it's even less surprising considering that, you know, a bunch of it's shallow water, and a lot of it's very flat. So it would make sense to use Hovercraft just as a vehicle. I mean, like I said, Hovercraft have been... Very popular and fairly powerful recently. So, it just makes perfect sense. You get all the access to everything, and it's a flat map, so vehicles are a good option. Izra and Golda both very quickly grabbing the 3.5 metal extractor. This is the one strong metal extractor on this map. There's you now one per side. It is, this is not a very old map for 0k. It I didn't even look that old, honestly. I should double-check the exact stats on it. But basically, this has been recently thrown into rotation. So, it's certainly something that players seem to have figured out pretty well. I mean, it's a fairly obvious thing. As you go to here, throwing out the wind generators on the high ground, which, as you do, I mean... That is an obvious choice when it's like 0.5 to 2.5. It's actually kind of the low end of where you really need wind, but... It's not a bad thing. I mean, it's still safe. It's still reasonably efficient wind. Same time, though, Izzara and Golda trying to find where the others are and trying to find if they can raid anything. Of course, one nice advantage of throwing wind where they are is that Golda is not really easily raided until any gunship or air switch happens. Which, on a map like this, could happen fairly quickly. There's a lot of available metal. Usually you see switches around 25-30 metal per second. Getting to that point won't require a huge amount of contested territory. I mean, you have like 8 metal per second right here. But contesting is going to happen anyway. Gota trying to take control of the center. He's right forced to retreat as they are a bit low on daggers. Gota's daggers are a little bit healthier too. He's right regrouping, trying to find a position to work from. And with 5 daggers, they are... Actually, with 3 daggers, they're able to one-shot... But Yuzuride playing it safe. Gold, on the other hand, double checking to see if there's anything to harass over to the side. Finds nothing. Yuzuride had not yet expanded over to the southwest. But Goda taking advantage of the fact that they now have the center control to really start pushing that center. Throwing a few quills into the mix. Like they're setting up for likely getting all these metal extractors over here. And definitely getting all the metal extractors over in the sandbars because. I mean, we got the daggers right here, defending it quite nicely. Izzeride, I don't think, actually is aware of any of this. They have, like, yeah, almost no radar here. Gold, on the other hand, adding radar over to the side. They can basically see all the sandbars completely, a lot of the center as well. They have essentially full information as to where Izzeride is. So Izzeride right now, they are reasonably well defended. They're actually not too far behind in terms of economy right now. But Gorda is starting to build up this entire sandbar area over the west. They are going to get a massive advantage very quickly. As well as taking the center, because there's not a whole lot Ezeride can do to contest that at the moment. Certainly trying to, but we're seeing Ezeride still relying heavily on daggers, and it looks like we're going to be seeing a push over to the side here. Daggers coming in to defend. Golda is trying to attack, but Ezeride actually think is in a better position overall. They have a few more daggers. They're certainly having the home field advantage. Golda's daggers here aren't really that well grouped. There's only five of them together, but they are going to manage to regroup with the rest of their of their army, and it looks like Izzeride, they're unfortunately just missed the boat. However, they will be able to go and start taking care of the sandbar expansion, which is Golda's main source of income on top, or over and above what Izzeride has. At the same time, though, Golda coming in for... Yeah, Gota coming in for an assault of their own over the eastern side of the map, but this Stardust should be able to deal with it. At the same time, Izzeride working to sandwich Gota's forces. Gota trying to escape, but he's going to be running right into a picket, right into the commander. Actually going to be able to see what Izzeride is up to. Granted, 
again, Golden knows what's going on. They have radar coverage over the entire area. However, Ezeride has kind of left the western side undefended. Golden could assault from there, but go to small raiding groups aren't going to be doing all that much good, especially over the eastern side of the map. This Stardust was perfectly placed to stop Golden from doing any damage at all. So Ezeride has managed to defend themselves quite well. Golden, on the other hand, relying entirely on daggers. And this may not work out. We're seeing right now Ezeride going into the southwest side of the map, trying to find what they can. And it looks like they're going to find plenty as Critical Mass of Daggers has more than been reached. Able to get rid of a Lotus. Able to get rid of several of the defending daggers. Retreating to get a better position to fight the remaining daggers from. But it's a question of whether or not that's actually going to work out. I mean, right now we're seeing this little counterattack from Gota trying to see if they can find this expansion here, which Ezeride is going for. And Gota is in a not great position to deal with this. They are working on it, but of course, if they go in, they're going to get counterattacked themselves, and that's exactly what Ezeride is doing, going straight in. Not going to be really worried about contesting anything. I mean, Gota's forces over to the south are stopping the expansion from happening, but as long as the Quill gets away alive, it will be worth it. Ezeride, what are you doing? Just retreat, get out of there, go for your counterattack. The counterattack's a great idea. Set that up for the back. Golden knows it's coming, but most of their army is over up front. If they go for a counterattack right now, they're not going to be well equipped to deal with this. They do kind of wish Ezra had gone for a bolus or two just to get rid of all these daggers over on defense. Like, just surprise bolus. Stop the daggers from coming in. Make Golda think that they can attack or counterattack. But Ezra, on the other hand, deciding there are too many lotuses, there are too many daggers up front. But that's fine, because again, right now Ezra is actually slowly picking away at Golda's forces, and their economy is about the same. So Ezra actually, with a bit of an advantage, as you can see on the attrition, 400 metal already Ezra has a, as an advantage, which. Works out to about five daggers. Or, let's actually select. Ah, screw it. <laughs> Works out to five daggers. And on top of that, amazing position coming from Israel, wiping out most of Golda's force here while the regroup, while the reinforcements from Israel come in behind. So Golda's entire defense force is Lotuses. That's it. That's all they have here. Lotuses only take eight shots from daggers to go down, so it's not going to be that long, but. Man, that positioning from Ezerite just coming in from by a surprise. I don't think Golda had... Golda did have, did have Raiden that just didn't notice as Ezerite went across the T. Wiping out a bunch of Golda's forces, but unfortunately for Ezerite, Golda did manage to stop that. And also, Golda has basically taken the entire center of the map. I mean, Ezerite... I get you want to have daggers, I get you want to have raiding, but I really want to see some kind of diversity. Because just daggers... It's great and all, does a lot of raiding, but it has its weaknesses, and Gorda is taking full advantage of those weaknesses. Like, throwing a few scalpels here and there, you'd probably be fine. And we're seeing even more so as Gorda losing far, almost all the daggers over the south, or, or Mace. Mace works too. Not sure if Mace works best against the Lotuses. We're seeing Halberd coming in as well. Okay, so there's that diversity coming from Izzeride. That's good. Glad to see that. And also, Ezerite, with the coat or with the Thresher, just to make it a little bit harder for any Aryans to come in, just in case. We only saw the Sparrow, which is not an Aryan. I mean, that's just the radar tower's transformed form. Still, go to getting a lot of information on Ezerite, getting quite the advantage of information, too. While at the same time, Ezerite and Gota going for a bit of an assault. Even numbers, I would give the advantage to Gota, though Ezerite is retreating. Pulling Golda into a bit of a trap here, as Golda is going to be running straight into the Stardust if they're not careful. And it looks like Golda, well aware of this, seeing how long it goes, trying to call their bluff, but Ezeride is fully retreating, ceding that territory over to Golda. And it's worth noting, Golda does have pretty much both sandbars fully under their control. And not a lot stopping them either. I mean, Ezeride, yes, they are ahead when it comes to attrition, but they have been behind when it comes to economy. So the game has been overall even. But again, Golda is a monster with daggers. I don't think Ezeride wants to ever engage an equal number of daggers on an equal footing against Golda. Because, yeah, they're probably going to lose. Golda's probably going to take that fight. Same time, though, Halbert's coming in here to get rid of the Lotuses. Smart move. Exhausting all the pickets before going in. And... Unfortunately, on fire at will, but that's fine. They managed to get close enough. Get through the pickets. Get through the lotuses reasonably well. A couple of the halberds go down, and that's not ideal. I mean, honestly, I I realize it's difficult, but halberds really are a unit you want to have set to only fire at your command. They, they hold fire the rest of the time. 
But that's fine, actually. Israelite's still managing to use that time to go in for a si side attack and break open this sandbar to the east. That being said, Golda is amassing forces over to the western side of the map. They won't easily be able to attack this expansion, but I think they will be able to beat it. It would be at great cost. But Golda has had an economic advantage this entire game. They could they could eat that cost. He's right, however, pushing, trying to see if he can find some weak point to attack from, and it may not matter, Gota going into the main base, and Izzeride, the one place they hadn't defended with Stardust, or just generally defended at all, is their main base, and it's forcing a retreat over the eastern sandbar. The initial units coming in managed to buy enough time for the remainder of the daggers to regroup. At the same time, there is a flanking force coming in here from Izzeride, Pincer and Gota, but Gota should be able to break out, get rid of this flanking force, go behind, and the mace is not in position to deal with this. Not sure why Izzeride did not have the mace go along with the flanking force. If they had a thing, all the daggers would have been killed. But at this point, Gota able to retreat, having actually gained an attrition advantage and finding a position to move in on. Yet again, another attack in the main base. And now, flanking from both sides, Gota is going to be very difficult to dislodge from Izzeride's base. Especially with pure dagger. Izzeride, no mesas, no bolts, and nothing. Just daggers. And it actually is working out. Daggers do, of course, have line splash, so it's, it is feasible, especially when they're clumped up like that, to get rid of a ball of daggers with your own ball of daggers. But even with that, Golda remains in control of most of the territory, in control of a great deal of the economy. And that is just going to be a real disappointment for... Actually, I actually forgot to come to think of it, because Izzeride did manage to dislodge Golda from their base. That was a highly effective approach. Or highly effective defense, I should say. Not really the approach. The approach failed. Miserably, in fact. Gold, however, taking advantage of that opportunity to set up even more defenses just to stop these daggers from coming in, which I think... I mean, it's going to be difficult to maintain, as we are seeing an air switch coming in from Izzeride, also from Golda. Golda not really taking advantage of it yet, though. Mostly taking advantage of a massive production capacity, which we should point out. There are a lot of product. There's a lot of production over to the north. Phoenix coming in, trying to get. Okay, that can't have been a correct shot. Phoenix going on the daggers would have made perfect sense. Phoenix going on anything else does not. Especially with the massive daggers coming in, being constructed by Golda, but at the same time, Golda going for Swifts. They know, hey, bombers are up. Time to go for Swifts just on reaction because not really a whole lot of reason to build them before. Swifts are not difficult to build up. Ravens, however, coming up as well. I'm curious that's going to be used as an anti-Lotus force, or what? I mean, with this many daggers, it might not even be a problem. Might be able to just get through the Lotus's head on. Or, you know, build half a dozen Halberds and deal with it that way. That works, too. Owl Hover coming in here. Finding a lot of information and its own death in the process, which mildly unfortunate, but still, that is information. Information is always valuable. Golda, I don't... I don't really see any disadvantage on their part. I mean, here we have, you know, the Ravens coming in here trying to find something. Oh, do find the Stardust, but I really feel like... Is it right? Why are you not attacking the Stardust? Actually, to, for, to that end... Well, I guess Is it right? had radar. I wouldn't necessarily know, but it's like... You know, once you see the Stardust, flip over the target to get rid of the Stardust. Two Ravens will get rid of a Stardust and won't die in the process if they attack the Stardust. I mean, the Ravens obviously died this time because they didn't attack the Stardust. But considering the circumstances, yeah, now it's a bit of a problem. And I would almost... Like, I, why Izzeride isn't going for Halberds, I don't know. However, we are seeing the... Okay, there's the bombing on the Stardust. It's going to be a bit risky with the pickets in the way. But I could see it working. I mean, all they need to do is drop the two bombs. And the pick is coming in. Missing, surprisingly. I guess because of the... Okay, fairly high up. And now the start is gone. Daggers coming in for Rizzeride. We'll be able to get rid of the pickets, no problem. They haven't wasted their missiles. But now the retreat into the Lotuses. And Rizzeride knows that is not a place they can approach. Unfortunately, again, Rizzeride does not have much to work with. Especially having lost their Air Force to the couple of Swifts from Golda. Actually, not a couple of Swifts. I shouldn't say couple of Swifts. There's plenty of Swifts from Golda. Golda also going for a lot of Maces now. Completely switching their production over to Mace because at this point, Daggers are kind of obsolete. Maces will be able to get through a lot of the stuff that Daggers are finding 
impossible to progress through. And again, halberds also will be very useful, but we don't see a lot of variety here. Halberds would be great in this situation. Just boluses would be nice-ish. I think boluses would crawl against the maces. They're still kind of new. We haven't seen a lot of use of them. I actually think bolus, uh, two or three boluses with the dagger is just slowing down all the lotuses would really help to wipe, or really would have helped. I mean, it's a little late now with the stardusts. But prior to that, it would have helped a ton to get rid of the lotus, to get rid of all the lotuses. Same time, though, Golda again maintaining position over this eastern sandbar, but losing it again. There's Ezerite waving out a bunch of Golda's forces, taking out a bit of metal extractor, creating a lot of reclaim to work with, which Golda has full access to, and that's. Not going to help out Easter Ride much beyond that. He's right attempting over the eastern side of the map, or western side of the map rather, but again, not working out. And we do have an Iris for Golda. Golda going for Cloaked Mace. The Cloaked Mace assault into Easter Ride's base. That should end it. Easter Ride does not have anything to counter Maces with. They don't have anything. Actually, they aren't really building much of anything at this point at all, honestly. They're focusing entirely on the Fusion Reactor, which. Unfortunately, it was a little far away from the caretakers to do much. As it stands, though, I don't really have a lot of hope here, because Izzeride is... Well, they're kind of fighting an uphill battle, having lost all the territory from the beginning of the match. There's... Their attrition advantage has gone down as well. They don't have a lot of reclaim that they're working with. They have some, and that's really just keeping them at parity. However, they are switching over to maces. This still... I don't know. I'm curious to see what's been done with boluses, honestly. Because... The thing with boluses is that they're very new, so I don't see a lot of people having gotten used to them. And in this case, with the maces coming in, probably would help as well. But at this point, the mace is able to wipe out the entire center defense line. And now, Gota looking to be coming in on all sides. They have daggers on all sides. Maces down the middle couple of flails just in case for anti-air. Daggers trying to come in, and granted, this many daggers against maces could actually get rid of them, maybe. I mean, they deal enough damage in bursts that actually does do a massive number on the maces, but it's not necessarily enough. Granted, maces don't have splash damage, and daggers do, so it does turn things into an interesting fight. However, with this with the invisibility. That's not going to work out. Never mind! Splash! Line Splash coming in, wiping out two maces at the cost of a handful of daggers. Izzeride evening out the attrition as a result of that. Every time those maces attack, opening everything up, losing two more maces for like three or four daggers. Absolutely making cost. And we see the bolus along with scalpels! Izzeride is going for the diversity of tactics now, finally. Boluses and scalpels will be a brilliant choice in this situation. Could very well turn this around, actually. The Iris being the only real strength, and I think Izzeride knows exactly where it is. Oh no, Izzeride doesn't have radar coverage of that section. No, they do. They do. Their commander's right there. They totally have radar coverage. They know when things go in and out, but unfortunately their commander is going to die in the process. The rest of the force is still regrouping. Unfortunately not reacting quickly enough, but managing to get... Ah, oh, I thought they had the right idea. I mean, they had the right idea. That, that initial attack order would have gone to the Iris. Would have revealed it all. But it may not matter. Wiping out the reclaim field, but losing many of the, almost all the daggers in the process. This is it. Gota turning this around. Thanks to that Iris. Unfortunately, a bit of a positioning failure on the part of Izzeride. And having lost their commander and the expansion over the south, and now losing all of their army. Or at least a large chunk of their army. We're back to 95% attrition. So Gota slight advantage, and Izzeride figures there's not much more they can do. Their big Hail Mary pass did not work out, and ultimately that is the game. But I gotta hand it to Izzeride. They managed to hold on very well despite having lower army value the entire game. They're actually surprisingly efficient. All things I mean, really, their attrition was on par with a smaller army value. It was just smart retreat, smart attack, but unfortunately didn't manage to actually get a lot of territory. And I think it would have been wise to have switched over to Halberd Bolas earlier, wipe out some of the defenses, break things open, maybe get the Western Sandbar. Hold on to that. That would have helped a lot for the economy. And honestly, this assault in here probably would have been able to do a lot more than Izzeride thought it would. It would have been at some cost. And maybe they expected layered defenses. That might have been why. They didn't expect just to be one la one line of lotuses. To be fair, that's not wrong. I mean, Gota has been investing in layered defenses this entire game, so it's a fair assumption. 
But that worked out for Gota. Gave them the territory, let them hold on to it, and Izurai just never... I mean, obviously didn't want to lose their forces if they could help it, which is smart. But it also meant they weren't able to get in and deal the damage necessary to stop Gota from ultimately outpacing them in economy and army. Well, with that, we are going to have another match. The next match is going to be between... Okay, here. Next match is going to be a match between Randy and Ultra Godzilla on Frosty Cove. Which should be interesting because, well, for one thing, Randy hasn't been... I mean, he's been, they've been back for a little while. But I haven't seen them fight Ultra Godzilla, and this sh should be interesting. I I hope you're excited as, as excited as I am. We will be back with that in a couple minutes, so stay tuned. <laughs> 